Hello, this is David Wormsey, and in this video, I'm going to be looking at applying some CSS hover effects to Beaver Builder photo modules. Now, over the course of these videos, I'm hoping to build up a bit of a library of various effects that can be applied to different Beaver Builder modules. That way, then I will have a central place for resources for future client work where I can just come in here and either grab the CSS or export the page templates or row templates themselves. And also, of course, I hope that these might be of use to some of your projects as well. So there's nothing particularly flash about any of the hover over effects that I'm using here, but they do use some more advanced uh, CSS like pseudo elements, transitions and flexbox. So I'm going to cover how to use these and amend this in this video. But you can come here and download these, as I say. But first to do that, you will need to go to the link that's below this video. That will take you to the home page for this site. And you'll need to solve this simple capture and place the answer in here. Press try demo and that will, after a little bit of time, recreate a copy of this site and will log you in. Then you'll need to head over to modules where I've only got one example at the moment. And when you're over at that page, you'll be able to go into the page builder and you can either save some of these rows as templates and export those or you can come and look at the CSS following this route over here. So let me just go over to another tab where I'm logged in and we'll go into tools into layout CSS JavaScript click on that and that will take us straight into the CSS tab where you can see all of my custom CSS for the examples that are below and there's also in there some comments as well. So I'm going to leave this now and go over to my own CSS editor, which is Stylizer, because I find that easier to work with. And I'm logged in. And if you've seen some of my earlier videos looking at working with CSS and Beaver Builder, you will already know that the page CSS is stored in one called layout.css over here. And any of my customizations that I've added to that page are added to the bottom of this file. So I know where to go straight away. So there, there are my custom CSS styles here. When it's out on the front here, it strips away the comments. So I can't see those only in the back end. Okay, so let's have a, a talk a little bit about the module itself. So the photo module is really powerful. It allows you to open up a light box showing the image. You can link it to a URL or link to the actual image page. You can also via the WordPress caption facility add that to the hover over effect. Oh, that's one of my changes. And that's the default look if you do that, if you add that on. But by default, there's no standard sort of hover over effect. There's just this change of the pointer click changing to the hand over here. So generally, I would like to add something on where I think something is clickable. So that's what I've done with this. Now, with all of these, I've actually added a custom class to the individual modules under the advanced tab. And here I've added simple opacity. So here's the rule that's been applying to get this opacity here. It's a very simple one set there. Typically, I wouldn't be adding a custom class like this to all of them. A simple effect like this, I would probably apply site-wide. So I'd remove this and just let fl-photo-content and the a tag and then hover. And that would apply to the whole of the site. So that's a fairly simple one. I'm going to skip over two and then come back one back to that one in the end because that's more complex. On example three here, I've used a CSS3 filter here for grayscale. So let's just take a look at that. Let's hover to and we'll go and open up this. So what I've done here, a couple of advanced properties here. I've used the transition and also the grayscale filter on this. So on the actual content module itself, I've put the grayscale to 100%. That's why it's showing like this on the color image. And on the hover, I've reset that to zero. So when we hover over, it shows. Now with these transitions here, 
we've on the hover here i've put this transition so it's on half a second so when we're just hovering over here it's got a smooth glide in and when i'm hovering out because i've put it also on the module here it's also gliding out as well now with each of these links over here filter it will take you to and i shall go there now to w3schools.com where you can look up and see exactly all the options you've got under filter and th this is excellent resource i i come there all the time and so we can go here and look at the options and how they're working on examples so we're using the grayscale here but what's also available is blur and brightness and contrast and all these things but there's a little bit of a caveat here because they're not supported by internet explorer and even the edge or safari so we have to be aware that some of these css properties won't work on all of the browsers so that's just something to be aware of so let's just go back here so i think that pretty much covers that let's go and look at example four this is one i probably wouldn't use and just been a little bit silly just to show you transform where we've got rotate here and if i just go to hover three i'm doing pretty much the same again i'm using a transition again to glide in and actually i didn't mention that earlier transitions also is another property which you'll find not work on ie and i think also the edge so you won't get this smooth transition and probably this would not be a good effect to have on ie because that wouldn't smoothly move like it is there but it's the same effect here i've just done that and i could i could change something else here too there are other effects like scale is one that i might not use on this uh, on the hover effect but i might use it on the original and then scale out let me just show you scale while i'm here so scale y we could have x and if i remember correctly one is normal so actually if i change this to 09 yeah, we can see that sort of scaling across the the y and if i change that to x it'll be scaling the other way so kind of silly effects with that one so let's just move on to the captions as well here as i mentioned that's the default here something that you might not be aware of nice neat little trick and i've just done it on this one is that in the caption area in wordpress so when you're you know you're setting your alt tags for your image in wordpress you can also actually add some html in there so you could if you're not very good with html you could just open up a text module and put it in the visual view and put in your links and stuff like that switch over to the text side and copy and paste the html and paste it in there as i have here so i can do a, a link over there so that's handy and what i've also done here is you'll notice it's clickable here on the image itself but if you notice here it's just on the caption it's not clickable so i wanted to play around with a little effect over here and i've used a thing called flexbox here to make the whole area clickable and this centered so the flex box is a sort of new property again that allows us to position centrally uh, these elements within elements in a way that we couldn't do before uh, so it's really quite powerful used a lot actually in beaver builder by default so let's just go over to hover four there as you can see i've set the background here set some styling on the font itself but this is the one display flex and i've set the align to center and justify to center so that's brought that right in there and then i also had to change the point of click events and make sure that this was as this wasn't clickable i just set this to none to overwrite what was happening before so now the whole area is clickable uh, and we can either bring that up or as i have on this one i've taken it actually to the home page uh, this is a bit of a silly example because it's in here and it's centered so i probably wouldn't align things up like this but that's how that's uh, that's how that's just working at the moment white space is just there because if i didn't have this you, you actually don't need it it was just to make sure that that lined up in there without it falling off the edge that was all that that was used for and the same with this bit of extra 
uh, styling over here because I'd used this yellow and my link colors were yellow. I had to make sure that my link for the capture that was in there was also set to black as it is over here. Right, so let's go right back up there to our example two. And this is something that I might use quite a bit. Let's go up to here. Now, this is where I'm using the pseudo element. And in this case, I think I'm using before. I could use it after. Here we go. That's it. So hover one. So what I've done here is I've set a transparent background here using hover and before so effectively what i'm doing with this is i'm adding an overlay so the before pseudo element is an element that doesn't exist if you like in html which we can then style so it's adding an extra element via css so it allows us to put this overlay and of course i can then go and change this so if i want to just change it to another color i can uh, have this it's not particularly a good color, I don't think, but you get the point. I can do that. So, and again, I'm using these transitions, which can, of course, be changed for the speed. But of course, remember, they won't necessarily work in all of the older browsers. And I've also, let's go over to this one. I've also added, using the before as well, I've also added in this icon here. Now, in this case, I've used the Font Awesome Library because I'm using the Beaver Builder theme. If I was using Generate Press or I was using Dynamic with Font Awesome turned on, I could just input this. And I've covered this in another video, so I won't go into detail. I just put their sort of Unicode in there and show that. But, you know, if I'm not using Font Awesome, I, equally, I could just go and I've just done this a few minutes ago, Google for another Unicode and here's one and this is the beauty of this you can just copy and paste this and if I just head back over to here and pop this in the content area there we are you see I've I've managed to pick one without needing this so I could just remove this font awesome now and that would still work and again, I've done the same the trick with the flex here. It's display flex and I put center center. So that just brings everything right into line on the middle there. And if I didn't want to have that hover over effect there, it's simple. You can just go and remove this as well. Now, something else, I'm going to bring that back here. You might have noticed that the this was growing this effect here. So what was making the icon grow well it's as simple as this really is that this icon is taking on the styling the font style that is set in here and what i've done is with the transition let's see if i can open this out i've set the font size to 30 so it's higher but because there is a transition set over here when i hover over it's easing in so it's moving from the font size which i believe is 18 pixels to 30 pixels over time. So that's creating that effect. Of course, if I didn't want this, it will go smaller. And I could then, in fact, let me just go back. I'm going to take that away and I'm going to pop this over here because I've actually added a color to this because actually this again is a an anchor tag itself so it's going to take on this color styling for here so i had to set a white for it and i set it separately here rather than over here because again with the transition it would go from the orange to the white so I, that's why i placed this here i hope that makes sense now but if i just place this now see it doesn't grow like that so you might want that effect which uh, might be better for that so I think that pretty much covers my examples here. I hope that was straightforward. I hope it's quite useful to your projects. I may well be adding some more hover over effects. I don't want to get into too much fancy stuff. As I say, there are add-on packs out there that have lots of the fancy stuff, but often I like to keep things quite simple and use the photo module for my work where I can. Okay, so that's me done. I'll catch you on another video. Thanks very much for listening to me and see you soon. Bye-bye.